just want to jump in here quick guys before the the video starts just a quick couple little bits uh, this video almost never made the light of day I wasn't gonna post it I was just gonna delete it and forget the day ever happened but after holding it for a couple days and thinking about it and looking at the footage I thought I'm just gonna swallow my pride put it out there come what may and uh, just to show you guys as a kind of a public service announcement like things can happen things can happen quick and uh, you know after uh, 50 years of uh, tripping and stuff I've never been in this position so you may be cocky too and think that nothing's ever gonna happen but uh, sometimes things just happen so just want to get that out there before everyone starts typing about all my mistakes I'm gonna own them and I'm gonna come back at the end of the the video and uh, just do a little wrap-up so here's your video Doug here, a little bit of a different video for you today, I'm out with uh, Buddy Daryl, and uh, we're out Lake St. Clair, specifically uh, Mitchell's Bay area, and uh, I always thought we'd come out for the morning uh, in the tin boat, get bounced around for a while. The wind's picking up, it's uh, probably pushing 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a mixed bag out here, who knows what uh, we might reel in. Bass season's still closed, but we've got uh, walleye, pike, musky, you know, even jumbo perch, so you never know. So let's do it. Let's do it. That's more like an order there. Right yeah, that's a that's a, at least it's action. the smallest boat out here. I think so. I think so. <laughs> uh, oh we well. Okay. What do we have? Nine? Yeah we got nine. Eight eight pike and one perch. So no surprise muskies or walleye yet. I like to get a walleye down for supper. Beauty pike. No wounds. Oh, a little, no, a little bit. Not bad.
Yeah, we just threw everything and trying to get it up. Oh, coming out. It, that's for sure. <laughs> All last week and we were pretty nervous. So. With the storm. Hey, just don't worry about it, man. Your nerves must be. Sit down. Yeah. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> right off the bat, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mike and Charlene, Jacine and uh, Darren and John. Those were the uh, the fishermen that, uh, if you heard me yell, I think I yelled three times, just like "Hey!" And uh, those two boats immediately dropped what they were doing and came flying over and uh, pulled us out. So a big thanks to them, not just for pulling us out, but for uh, they towed us to an island, like it took 45 minutes towing that boat upside down because there's no way in the world we could flip it. After we got to the island, we had these boat lifters, we lifted the boat, flipped it upside right, dumping the water out, but still the motor couldn't be used because it had been un underwater for about an hour, upside down, and the oil in the water and everything, but they, from that point, they uh, continued to hook us up and they towed us all the way back to the marina for like another hour or so. They gave up a couple hours and some gas of their time, so a big shout out to them. Uh, they're, uh, they're heroes in my book. So what actually happened? Well, as far as I can tell, I had just released a fish. I was and sat back up. Daryl hooked into another fish and hit the boat in uh, neutral. And at the same time, we had a little string of uh, rogue waves come from the side which actually the first one came right over the motor at the back end and uh, filled half the boat full of water immediately and Daryl hit the bilge pump and started pumping it out and at the same time another one came in and then another one came in and then basically the the uh, boat was was just totally full of water and, and sinking and he looked at me and said uh, we're going down and I said yeah we're doing this and the boat just continued to sink as our gear floated up and away and as the boat, I don't know, maybe the boat, we were in the water probably up to our, our waist before the boat or the flotation kicked in and just kind of started popping the boat sideways and kind of dumped us out. And then it came up upside down and uh, we were left out in the water. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. And seconds, just seconds, I, I, if you watch the, the video back, I, probably within you know eight ten seconds from the time the first wave came in and we were in the water just just like that so uh, mistakes number one should we have been out there going out it was uh, it was fine and then a couple of spells you see in the video a couple spells there where the the wind picked up and the waves picked up but then we go calm again but regardless after the first first time uh, we should have just packed it in and went home. We, we got to own that. We, we shouldn't have been out there in a small boat. We joked about it and uh, yeah, we paid for it. So small boat, uh, as far as the wave goes, I don't think there's anything we could have done about those waves. It was uh, like, that's the part where I say, sometimes things happen, but they happen when maybe we shouldn't have been there. Uh, life jackets, got to own that too. Weren't wasn't wearing my life jacket had it handy but uh, not on my body and uh, yeah they're lifesavers for a reason you got to wear them from the work I had I grabbed mine and I did have it under my arm but uh, I wasn't wearing it stupid mistake and uh, yeah this time it worked out next time maybe not uh, a fellow just died on the weekend uh, I think it was Lake Erie he drowned so you never know another thing was uh, Daryl was smart enough to uh, have that blue barrel, waterproof blue barrel. And uh, he kept all the stuff in there and his phone, where my phone is in my pocket. So let's say that boat didn't, uh, didn't hear us no, or nobody was around. What would have happened? Well, what would have happened is I would have tried to climb up and lay on top of that boat and I drift to, who knows, Michigan or something across the lake. But 
with Daryl having his phone in the, the blue barrel, mine dead in my pocket. So Daryl could have called for, for rescue or help right away. So my phone was instantly killed. So there again, waterproof uh, containers for your uh, your phones and their emergency radio or whatever you got would be a great idea in the future because a dead phone is no good. I know that. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, just a crazy day. So what have I learned? Well, check the weather, check the wind, and uh, use your brain, wear your life jacket, uh, yeah, keep your stuff dry. And like I said, if even if we had not been rescued, we could have made a phone call. Daryl could have made a phone call. I'd be the dead guy with the dead phone. So that's uh, that's huge. Shout out to Hummingbird, uh, Daryl's super expensive uh, fish finder, upside down, on, in the water for over an hour, still works. So good on you, Hummingbird. Uh, this was a, a very uh, expensive outing. We lost a, a lot of gear, cameras, phones, fishing tackle, rods, reels, whatever. But uh, glad to be here, glad to make this video. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack. I don't really want it. That's not why I put the video out. I wanted to do it to show you how quickly, even experienced people, things can happen. And, and you do, you get complacent, you get confident and uh, you think nothing's going to happen. I've been doing this for 30, 40, 50 years and, uh, and then it happens. So it, it can happen to anybody, it happened to me and I uh, hope it never happens to you. But on the same hand, there's still good people in the world and uh, yeah, if you ever see anybody in danger, go there as fast as you can because like these guys said, if it was us, we'd hope you do it for us too. If it was the other way around, we'd hope you do it for us. I'll see you in the next video when I do something different than sink a boat. <laughs> See you guys.